Welcome back to Looking Above. We are so glad that you have joined us. We look a little different today. We are not in the same space. I am actually in California right now for a pastor's retreat and am enjoying not being in snow. I wouldn't say it's warm here, but at least it's not snowing. Right. Um, yes. <laughs> and Brooklyn is stuck in her house in quarantine. Mm -hmm. I feel a little bit like I'm in jail. <laughs> <laughs> their, really poor, their poor family has um, passed around influenza A and it has like trickled through you guys one at a time. And so you've just been. I've been stuck here for a while now. So yeah. <laughs> going a little bit crazy, but it's okay. I'm glad that we can still record. Yes. Yes. So thank you, technology. And thank you, Grant, for helping us put this together. And even though we look a little different, we can still have a great conversation. Today, we're going to talk about meditative prayer. And we will get there in just a moment. But why don't we start with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for technology today. I thank you that even though Brooklyn and I are a third of the country away from each other, we can have this conversation and continue to lead and guide others as we study your word and as we look at prayer this semester. God, we pray that in this time that you would guide our conversation, that you would just speak to all of our hearts and help us all to hear from you and to know what um, you want us to know and what you want us to understand about meditative prayer, God, and how that can change not only how we engage with scripture, but also change our lives. So we thank you for this opportunity and this discussion that we're going to have. And we ask that you would make us better because of it. We thank you. We praise you and we love you, God. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're talking about meditative prayer today. Mm -hmm. And in the past, we've done a podcast on the spiritual discipline of meditation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which that was, I think, two seasons ago, if you want to go back and listen, because there are similarities. Yes. Um, but do you want to give them a quick overview of what it is, what mm -hmm. meditative prayer is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So meditative prayer is going to go kind of hand in hand with meditation. So when we've talked about Christian meditation before, we talked about how that's different than uh, um, maybe the Eastern religious view of emptying oneself. And so Christian meditation is more about filling oneself and really engaging our minds. This form of prayer is going to deal with how we interact with scripture. So it's going to be a prayer that is focused on scripture, but allowing that scripture to permeate and um, really just change us, to be changed by the scripture, to allow God to speak to us and not just like uh, understanding, like coming to grasp the scripture more fully, but really to be emotionally affected and um, just letting, letting our spirit speak to and listen to the Holy Spirit as we come into the scripture so that we have a deeper, more full understanding, um, not just head knowledge of scripture. Yeah, turning that head knowledge to heart knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that I knew I've done this before. I didn't have a name for it. I wouldn't right, have called it meditative <laughs> prayer. Right. Um, but I, I love that it does have a name and that there's this description because I think often I you are so much better at this than me, but often I can go to the Bible and it, it can easily become a checklist thing for me. And it can easily mm. become and not that it's bad, but just a learning mm -hmm. tool um, instead sure. of an emotional connection with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a struggle I've had, and I'm sure I'm not alone. Right. Um, yeah, I but. think um, when we when we go to scripture and I love to pick scripture apart and kind of geek out on it and really study it and look at the words and try and understand the meaning and the context and all of that. 
But we have to remember that we are more than just mind, right? And we're to love the God, love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, like with all of us. And our emotion is part of who we are. And so this is, um, I think, a really neat tool that we have in prayer for us to be more fully impacted by scripture and to have just a more well-rounded understanding of scripture and to let it affect and round us as well. Right. Um, Um, Yeah. I want to read this Psalm um, Mm -hmm. because this type of prayer is scriptural as well. So Mm -hmm. um, Psalm one, one through three says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with the sinners or join in with the mockers but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. Mm -hmm. But it says that they delight in the law of the Lord and in God's word, meditating on it day Mm -hmm. and night. Yeah. Um, And Richard Foster, we are reading that book, as you know, if you've been following along, um, his book called Prayer, talks about this and he talks about it um, like regurgitation, (laughs) which I did not enjoy his description. He said it was like a cow chewing on cud. You just Mm -hmm. chew on this mm-hmm. little piece of scripture but mm-hmm. Karen has a better description <laughs> <laughs> maybe a less disgusting one anyway <laughs> um yeah i i think of it more as marinating so if oh i will just tell you ho oh, oh, today we found a hawaiian restaurant for our mm. lunch yes and so we got like authentic hawaiian plate lunches like I did in my teenage years when yeah, we lived in Hawaii. Live there, so was it yeah. as good as like it was in so good? It was yeah. so good. Yeah, it was. It was very good. Um, we enjoyed it. But as I was eating, I said to Paul, "You can tell this chicken has been marinating for a long time." Like. When you put a piece of meat in marinade, you know, they often tell you, let it marinate overnight or let it marinate, you know, for hours. So, so many Mm -hmm. hours before you cook it because that flavor infuses the meat and like literally becomes part of the chemical makeup of the meat. The meat is now different because it has just been imbued with all the goodness of the marinade. So it's not just brushed on the outside. It becomes part of it. It changes it. And so now it is a different flavor altogether. And that meat that I had from lunch was so good because clearly it had been marinating for a long while. And this is what we do in meditative prayer is that we take a scripture and we just let our being marinate in this um, and just let it just wash over us again and again and change us from the inside out. And we let it affect us and affect our, um, affect our mind, but affect our heart and our emotions even more. And it, and it changes us. So uh, do you feel like that is unnatural for you though? Because for me, even if we go with this marinating, when I Mm -hmm. see a recipe that Mm -hmm. calls for me to marinate something for like six hours, I'm like, oh, so I have to start dinner six hours before we even want to start. I've only got 30 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like it's very unnatural, um, this type of prayer, because what, Mm -hmm. what I at least try to do is like rush through it and maybe not even rush, but move through it at a at a reasonable pace and marinating is kind of stopping and sitting with it absolutely and i think um one of the things that he suggested was taking a very small i mean he was talking like phrases of scripture a lot of times like not even like a full passage but like a verse or a piece of a verse or a concept and just sitting in it and he said for at least a week (laughs) And that's a really long time because, yes, we like to be productive even in our devotional time, right? Or even in our prayer time, we want to be productive. We want to see results. 
And this is saying like to see the results, like the marinade, you have to soak in it for a long time time and we are a happy meal society and we want the quick fix and we want to get into our bible read it be changed move on and that's not the way that it works so often right we have to sit in it and we have to let the holy spirit work on us and he does not rush right no he does not (laughs) and that has been i think one of the lessons of this past year for me is that he does not rush he cannot be rushed he cannot be manipulated Mm -hmm. and so in if i want to see like the heart change if i want the scripture to become a part of me i have to slow down and i have to sit with it and i have to let it change my makeup like a marinade would change the chicken right so meditative prayer is like like meeting god in his word it's not just reading his word it is being in it (laughs) would you agree with that yeah Yeah, there's this quote that i liked a lot because i felt um convicted by it but it said Mm -hmm. there's more than just finding out what it says and what it means because i feel often that's what i'm doing Mm -hmm. when i'm going to scripture but which is important yeah and it is important but this is like this is just a different side of it this is Mm -hmm. a different way to go Mm -hmm. with it so there are also questions like what did it say to you Were you struck by anything? And most important, did you experience God in your reading? Mm. And like, how many times have I come away from scripture and not, Mm -hmm. I think asking myself, did you experience God? That would be very changing to my spiritual life Mm -hmm. um, regarding Mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even just, you know, starting from that place, like how often do we sit down? Like you said, because it's our checklist, because I know that I need to do it and I know that it will change me, but then we do it almost habitually and without pausing to say, number one, this is the word of God. Like I am going to encounter God today. But number two, like Holy Spirit, will you meet me here? Mm -hmm. Will you encounter me in these pages? Will you encounter me in these words? Will you change my heart through this time that I have um, sitting with you and sitting in your word? And so, yeah, it's like not just do I come away with a greater knowledge, which is important, but yeah, what struck me? What is changing me? Where was God? <laughs> Where was God? Did mm-hmm. I encounter him? I think I think those are great questions. Yeah. And like you said, um, you put a quote here too, and I won't just mm-hmm. read quotes the whole time, but I think it's really good too. And it that says, good ones. Um, Richard Foster, my friend Rich, you know, friend he, Rich. yes, he <laughs> talked about a running monk, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I loved the title of that story. But, mm-hmm. um, and he talked about somebody that went away trying to get closer to God. Um, mm-hmm. And there was this monk there trying to teach him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the one that you said was like, sit with this for weeks. And, or I think it was one yeah. week or something, but he had one piece that he was supposed to sit with. Um, and he came back to this running monk. They called him a running monk because he was wearing tennis shoes, I think, right? And, yeah. um, and he's like, I'm not, I already know these things, basically. I, I'm not mm-hmm. getting anything. I don't know what you're trying to do. Um, and he said, you're trying to control God. Go back to this passage and this time be open to receive whatever God has for you. Mm-hmm. Don't manipulate God. Just receive. Communion with him isn't something you institute. It's like sleep. You can't make yourself sleep, but you can create the conditions that allow sleep to happen. All I want you to do is create the conditions. Open your Bible, read it slowly, listen to it, and reflect on it. Mm. And that one was convicting to me too, because I can also go into this situation, um, reading my Bible and be like, okay, I am going to experience God and I'm going to make him tell me what I need to hear. And I can try to manipulate him and control the situation. Or I think if if I pray more passionately, then, then I'll get it. Yeah, (laughs) great. Like, okay, God, no, I really mean it this time. Like, please just talk to me right now. (laughs) I know you can hear hear me. me. Yeah, right. I mean it. We can't do that. Um, This is about being open to God and Mm. yeah, 
just mm-hmm. letting go of control, surrendering to him. Right. Right. Sitting in the marinade. So being willing to be on his timing, I think is, is the hardest part and also the yeah. most important part of this. Especially when we're seeking answers and it is sure. good to go to God and um, in his word and through prayer to mm-hmm. seek answers. But we want our answer when we ask the question. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is something you and I were talking about that, you know, it, sometimes it'll be a passage that we sit in. Um, and maybe it's something, you know, for me, maybe it's something that I'm studying to preach on, but I feel very convicted that if I'm going to preach on it, it has to change me first. Mm -hmm. So I will, you know, just sit in something and let God continue to talk to me. So maybe it's a passage, maybe it's a phrase, maybe whatever, like I told you, I've been looking at the concept of God being compassionate. I felt like I kept seeing this um, in different things I was reading. And it was something that we had, we had just talked about, I think Mm -hmm. on last week's podcast, maybe not, uh, maybe it was after that, but we talked about compassion being a very important part of intercession. And so I felt like God just kept bringing up this concept of needing to be compassionate and the fact that he is compassionate. And I thought I really need, I need to marinate (laughs) a little bit and just let God change my heart and help me to understand his compassion, not just towards the world. Like, yes, that is his character, but also his compassion towards me. I am very good at understanding concepts about God and less good at allowing um, myself to maybe receive and experience the truth of that. So these are things that I've been, you know, asking God a lot lately is help me to understand your love for me. Help me to understand your compassion for me. And so just trying to sit in that and sit in just a couple key scriptures. I, um, you know, I saw in Exodus 34 when God is pass, passes by Moses on the mountain and he reveals his name to him. You know, he tells him that his name is Yahweh, but he says, I'm a God of compassion. And so just trying to understand, like when God announced himself to the world, when he talked to Moses and said, this is who I am. The first thing that he said about himself is that he is the God of compassion. And so I thought, whoa, I like, I need to take note of this. This is like key characteristic of who God is. And so that's something that I am now, like when I'm sitting and praying and meditating on this verse, trying to understand, not just like understand, but like understand Mm -hmm. what does that mean, God, that you are a God of compassion. And honestly, just in the last few days, as I'm thinking about this, like it's completely changing my understanding of God in a heart level in just, you know, I I was thinking about the fact that one of the places it talks about God having compassion, it talks about like, like a father for his child or like a mother for their child, like that idea. And I was thinking, you know, like if my child is broken, if my child is hurting, like my compassion meter is like, off the charts Mm -hmm. you feel it almost more than they do your heart breaks almost more for them sure yes and so like it wrecks me and so then trying to take that understanding like as a parent what do i feel in compassion for my child and then apply that and think okay god feels that way towards me but i'm human and i'm imperfect so therefore my compassion is imperfect his compassion for me is perfect Mm -hmm. like trying to just let that wash over me and change me in my experience with god um yeah well like we said (laughs) yeah in the room last week we talked about how you can't understand you can't know something until you know you can't understand something until god reveals it to you and turns it to heart knowledge Mm -hmm. and this is one of those things and like his compassion or so many other things throughout scripture Mm -hmm. we can read it so many times but when it is the right time as long as we're seeking god he will 
it's like he, I don't know, turn, turns a light bulb on or something and, mm-hmm. and you just have a deeper understanding. Yeah. But it is a slow process because even right. for, like you said, you've been sitting with this since last Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And so that's a week of just, and maybe even longer because we even talked longer. about it. Yeah. 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 And you're just sitting with this one concept. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not like you immediately were like, oh, I get it now. It's oh, been like yeah. revealing right. things slowly to you mm-hmm. in his timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I, I told you, I think it's worth repeating. We have a friend who's going through something really difficult with her family right now. And yesterday she and I were texting back and forth. And then I was just overcome with compassion and just such a strong emotion of feeling like what she must feel like as a mother right now in this situation where she has no control over her child's health and the health system is failing her and how difficult that must be. And I was just sitting here in this tiny house in San Diego, just weeping. And as I sat here, I thought, wow, I think God is like letting me enter into like feel, you know, which is part of intercession is compassion. But it it all of a sudden was like starting to click with me, like how compassion and intercession go together because I was compelled to pray for her then. Like because I was feeling, because I had such a heart of compassion for what she was enduring right now, then I had to sit here and pray. Like I had no choice. I had to do it. And so I think that when we can do this and do this well, when we allow God when it, through meditative prayer, when we allow him to really affect us at this heart level, then it just plays out in so many ways. For me, it just happened to play out in this you know, this type of prayer that we've been learning about, but it could change anyone in any way, any day. And what's funny is uh, we last week um, met with our small group and I'm praying for more compassion. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want to be compassionate like Jesus because that moved him to do so much. Um, And you were there too and kind of praying the same thing. And so that kind of leads me to my next thing is, this is something we also can pray about this. How do we say that? Like this type of prayer, mm-hmm. we can start with prayer about it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like we need the Holy Spirit's help to even enter this prayer. Right. So to figure out what to meditate upon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, we can start with that like god what do you want to reveal to me what do i need more of what do i need to understand about you what do i need to um gather scripture that maybe i haven't understood before so yes we can start absolutely with prayer and just saying god can you reveal to me where do i begin with this what do you want to what do you want to talk to me about Or maybe it's something that, you know, like at the beginning of this chapter, this guy just went to this monk and was like, where do I start? You know, and he gave him a passage to start with. And um, as we saw in that story, like he sat with it for days and was like, I am getting nothing. There is nothing. I know everything there is to know about this, you know, and the guy just kept saying, just go back to it and wait on God and go back to it and wait on God. And so maybe it's something, you know, that you ask a friend or a pastor or a life group leader, like point me to a scripture and mm-hmm. start with that and see, um, see what, what God wants to do in us. But yeah, I love that idea to, you know, start with prayer and ask God where, where could I begin? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. And I think it doesn't matter because the guy that went to the running monk in the book um, mm-hmm. that needed help with this, mm-hmm. he was going to school to be a pastor, right? Or mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. something like that. Was, like he was, yeah. his, knowl- his head knowledge of the Bible would right. have been greater than the average right. person who hasn't spent time studying the Bible like that. Right. And so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like if you mm-hmm. have never read the Bible or if you have a great knowledge of the Bible, mm-hmm. um, you can still enter into this meditative prayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, 
Um, it's beautiful. I think the thing to remember is just to not get tired or frustrated or to give up too easily because, you know, like that, that could have easily happened in that story that we read. It could have easily happened that I think his name was Jim, but that he Mm -hmm. gave up because he kept going to this scripture and he was studying it for hours day after day. And then he um, just felt like he was getting nowhere, you know, and and the monk kept saying, just go back. There was a, the quote that you mentioned earlier, and it was talking about sleep, right? How we cannot make ourselves go to sleep. I don't know if you struggled with this as a child. Like as a kid, I could not fall asleep. And I remember like trying to will myself to sleep so many nights. And my brain was just going, 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 spinning on all the things. And I was like, I could not tell my brain shut off and go to sleep. Um, and I love that he he talked about that. Like that quote was from the running monk, but he said, like, you just have to create the conditions. And so he said, open your Bible, read it slowly, listen to it, reflect on it. And so um, I think this is like there's the prescription, there's the the way to do it, but we have to keep doing it and we have to not get frustrated if every time we sit down we're not getting this revelation or this deep heart understanding of it it's like we said we might sit in one verse or one concept for weeks maybe before Mm -hmm. it really changes us and transforms us and before we're really like oh my word god now i get it and that's what you were saying earlier is that <clears throat> we think we get things and then all of a sudden when we get it, we're like, oh, wow, I did not get that before. <laughs> yeah. So do you have, is this basically what you do then? Because I think you are good at this. Um, you just stay in, what does it say? It says open your Bible mm-hmm. um, just to read create it. the conditions. I can't find right. it now. But yeah, open yeah, your Bible. Open read your Bible, slowly. read it slowly, <laughs> listen to it and reflect on it. That's what you would say <clears throat> is what yeah. you do. Um, yeah, I think he talked in here some also about um, our imagination, right? And so mm-hmm. how we can like enter into the story. And I think that's important is that we have to put ourselves in the place. Like sometimes when we read the Bible, we read it as this observer that's way out here watching what's going on in the, in the story. And we need to like zoom in and put ourselves into it so that we understand it differently. So if we read a story, you know, the story about the feeding of the Mm 5,000 and you read that story and you put yourself in the shoes of the disciples, right? And Jesus says, you feed them. And they're like, wait, what us? Like, we don't have anything. And he's like, well, what do you have? And, you know, and so if you can put yourself in that story and be like, okay, now I'm bewildered. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's probably 20,000 people here and you want me to feed them. And like, you can feel like this frantic feeling. And then you just, you watch as you see your rabbi do this miraculous thing. And as you keep handing out this bread, there's more bread in your basket and you just keep going and keep going. And you start to, as you read this, start to feel like this overwhelming, what am I a part of, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) like, And it just changes the whole story when you have immersed yourself in it and suddenly your emotions are engaged. So that was one of the things that he suggested is that we read it with our imaginations, that we engage in scripture and and put ourselves in it. And sometimes we need to put ourselves in a few different positions, right? Mm -hmm. Like you read the story of Mary and Martha and... Darn, I want to be Mary so badly. And then I read that and I'm like, but I know I'm Martha. But do you know, it's been so impactful for me to read it as Mary, to read Mm -hmm. it and think about like, what was Mary feeling? Like there was a couple of days when I was trying to just process God's love for me. And I would sit in my prayer time and I would have to like tell myself, okay, you are Mary sitting at his feet. Just look up at his face and just 
be in awe of who he is and that you're in his presence, you know, and let that story change you. But you read it entirely differently than if you just read it as a third party observer who's way out here. Who's just watching a movie kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Which is how most of us probably engage with scripture most of the time. Um, well, again, or- it's like a little bit consumeristic. Like this is, it could easily be tr- twisted to entertainment almost, like a story mm-hmm. that I'm reading or a bedtime story mm-hmm. I'm reading my child mm-hmm. um, instead of like the word of God. The word of God, mm-hmm. right. That can transform us, that can inform us, but that can change us and shape us and that we can interact with. Like when we consider that Jesus is the word and, you know, and the word of God, like we just put this all together and we realize like this is a living organism in many ways that we are interacting with when we read the word. And of course, through the Holy Spirit encountering us in that too, then it is just going to change us if we are willing to sit with it long enough. Right. I think when I read this chapter at first about meditative prayer, like I said, Mm -hmm. I hadn't really had a name for this before. Mm -hmm. Um, I was confused how this was prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So do you want to speak to that a little bit? Right. Well, I think it goes back to what we were just saying. And that's why Mm -hmm. I'm sure why you asked this is because we're talking about the word of God. So this Mm -hmm. is how God communicates to us most readily like this is god's communication to the entire planet is the word of god is Mm -hmm. the scripture and so when we consider that prayer is conversation so if i'm talking to god and then i'm opening my word and reading well guess what he's doing (laughs) he's talking back to me so it's it's just taking our prayer and then engaging with the scripture as the way that he is reciprocating to us but as we sit in that then the other piece of that is the holy spirit comes in and just enlightens us and gives us a greater depth of understanding yeah prayer is communing with god and that is Mm -hmm. what you're doing when you're doing this type of prayer Mm -hmm. and you had said that um about how this type of prayer is so personal And I think that that's something worth noting as well is that you and I could take the same verse and meditate it on it for this next week. Mm -hmm. And we're going to walk away changed in different ways. Yeah. Because God... Sorry, I was going to say that is part of the word being alive. It speaks differently to us. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And God is so personal that he's not about to take what I need to learn and apply it to your life. Like Mm -hmm. he's going to take what you need and apply that to your life, you know, and he's going to change me um, where I'm at in my circumstances and in my, just my entire life process right and he's going to look at you and say okay here's where you're at and this is where i need to meet with you and so it will Mm -hmm. be entirely different in fact i would i would love to like see a life group do that like everyone meditate on one same verse for a week and just come back and see how god has informed and transformed us in such unique ways yeah that would be really cool do it get back to us (laughs) yeah. <laughs> well, do you have anything else you want to add? This one was kind of straight to the point. It really was. Um, yeah, I think it's, I like that this was included in here because like you said, it kind of seems like, wait, is this prayer or is this meditation? Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it is both. But I think It is um, a very powerful way for us to be changed through prayer. When we talk about the fact that prayer changes us, I think that bringing the scriptural component into it 
then just takes it to a whole new level yeah. Yeah, of um, capacity for change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to peek back at our notes and see if there's anything else I really wanted to say. Uh, like you said, it is very, I feel like it is a very straightforward. There's not, um, not a ton of applications because it's like one application, but then that application can affect us in infinite ways. Right. In infinite ways. Yes. And, um, you know, when you have, um, been successful in this, I think because, because your emotions have been unlocked, (laughs) like, you know, like you will talk about sometimes when you feel like God, um, opens a box in your brain, Mm -hmm. you know, and like, suddenly you're like, oh, I understand these things. I think this is similar, but it's like at a heart level. Yeah. I think it's kind of like, um, you know, like you're fiddling with a lock, fiddling with a lock. And then finally it's like open, you know? And so something, um, something in your heart, something in your emotion is just like, oh, wow. Like mm-hmm. that's what that means. <laughs> like, oh, wow. You know? And then it just, I don't know. It It's a new uh, understanding that you didn't is. get to on your own. And that's how you know it's the Holy Spirit, um, which right. I love that. And I love when that happens. Um, right. I'm excited to... I normally would have spent the last week um, preparing mm-hmm. for this podcast by doing mm-hmm. this really intentionally. But as we said, um, you my family that. has been sick. <laughs> so... Right. <laughs> But so I'm really excited to apply this to my life because mm-hmm. um, like I said, I've done it before, but not intentionally mm-hmm. like I called to. So mm-hmm. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for for all of us to try it and to be in conversation and to talk about how God is using this then to change us and to really take us into depths of understanding of who he is Mm -hmm. and of how he loves us and how um, he sees us and what his mission is in the world, like just helping us to just get in tune with him. I think Mm -hmm. this form of prayer just has endless possibilities for um, growing us really. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Do you think we'll be able to end it how we always do? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. It might be a little off. Oh, goodness. Well, we are so grateful that you have spent this crazy discombobulated time with us from Wyoming and California and home and a tiny home and (laughs) all of this, wherever you are. We thank you, as always, for just taking some time and sitting with us as we're processing as we're learning we hope that you are learning and growing as well and we really hope that everything we do and say here is encouraging you to keep looking Looking above. above